Welcome to IVF This, episode 54, Grief Bursts. Welcome to IVF This. I'm your host, Emily Ginn. I'm a mother to two beautiful and feral boys. I'm married to my favorite person in the world. I'm a social worker, a life coach, and an IVF warrior. I'm here to teach you how to manage your mind and emotions during your IVF journey, to break free from anxiety and regain control of your life, even in the midst of infertility. I'm going to teach you to say IVF this to how we think about, talk about, and experience infertility. Let's go. Hello, 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 my beautiful friends. So happy to be with you today and talking to you about grief, which is everyone's favorite topic, I know. But I do love talking about it, giving it some airtime because it's not talked about. It's not given airtime. So often grief is overlooked, shushed, and all manner of minimized. And that's just not what we do here on IVF This. So we're going to talk about what grief bursts are. Some people call them grief grenades or grief bombs. Whatever your preferred descriptor is, doesn't matter. But first, I want to share some listener love because I haven't done that in a while. In fact, I want to share two reviews that the podcast has received recently. So the first one is from user MG Buell. Bull, I'm butchering that. I'm so so sorry. Uh, I have just finished episode one and I love it. You are a rock star, Emily, and your words are perfect mirror to me. Love you, girl. Can't wait to hear the rest of the podcast to keep me company through my process. Well, my friend, you are very welcome. I hope you hung around for more than a few episodes and that you are getting the love, support, and grace that you deserve during your journey. And the second one comes from R. Runge, Rung, again, butchering it, not my intentions, I'm so sorry. I started listening to the podcast to prepare for going through IVF with PGT and realized that almost all of the episodes were already applicable to my journey through pregnancy and infant loss. Learning to navigate all the emotional processing and trauma is so important for many women out there. So thank you for making this podcast like this. Again, a thousand times over, you are so, so welcome. I'm so sorry to hear about your losses, but you touched on something that I really pride myself on with this podcast, which is making these concepts applicable within the context of infertility and outside of it. Self-worth versus self-loathing, which is what I usually always talk about, but in a really specific container, is a universal struggle. So should the tools to combat it be universal? So thank you both for taking the time to rate and review the podcast. When you rate and review it on the platforms that have that function, you make it easier for people to find the podcast. So thank you for doing that. And if you haven't done it, maybe take a couple of minutes and do that for me. I really appreciate it. Now, if you're on social media, on Instagram or Facebook, an episode or something really lands for you, take a screenshot of it and share it. Tag me and I'll share it too. Let's get the word out that the one in six of us globally don't have to do this with all of the self-loathing, the anger, the frustration. We can feel differently throughout our entire journey. We can incorporate more grace, compassion, and love for ourselves, no matter what the situation is. All right, let's talk about grief bursts. I mentioned a few minutes ago that they can be called grief grenades or grief bombs. Literally, the titles are completely interchangeable. But the idea is that you're going along, you're feeling fine, you're not really thinking about whatever it is, IVF, infertility, losses, whatever it is in that moment that you're grieving. For that moment, you're just kind of living your life. Maybe you've had some distance from whatever that thing is that you've been grieving. Maybe you're crying less. Maybe you're feeling your mood to be a little bit lighter. And again, and I want to emphasize this, you're kind of perceiving that things are fine or they're they're going okay. And then, bam, like a truck, a grief burst happens. Maybe a song comes on related to your grief, or just something that invokes a lot of emotion for you. A commercial on TV, walking past a parent pushing a stroller, driving uh, past a park that's full of kiddos running around, maybe driving past the hospital where you found out you were experiencing a loss. You look at the calendar and you notice that there's an anniversary coming up. 
And let me tell you, you could have done these things a million times and been fine. And on that million and first, you're just leveled. So the reason that I wanted to talk about this is because of the holiday season, honestly. This comes up so much because there is so many family-oriented things during this time. There are so many occasions, traditions, reminders, expectations, hope, all of it during this time. Now for me, this happened last year. It was September of 2020 that we found out our transfer failed. That had been our last embryo. And for me and hubby, we were pretty sure we probably weren't doing another round, right? Financially, my age, our success probability, we were considering, do we even want to put ourselves through that again? So a big thing that I had been grieving throughout that fall was this idea that my family might not look the way I had always thought it was going to look, which I think is a very real and a very hard thing that a lot of us think about. So I had started to feel better. I got through Thanksgiving and all the family stuff was just fine, was really starting to feel good about where we were as a family and how I would feel good about going through IVF again or not. Not that we had made that decision, obviously, but that if that was the decision we were going to make, then I would feel grief, but I, I knew we would still be amazing. And then Christmas time rolls around and all of the Christmas things are a buzz and so exciting and shopping and festivities and really everything. I had put a lot of my thoughts about IVF and that stuff out of my mind. My hubby and I decided, my hubby and I decided we weren't even really going to entertain a serious discussion about it until well after the new year. So I'm saying all of this to really emphasize how much work I had done in processing my grief and pain. And there I was. This is the scene. I walk into Target on December 23rd. The boys were home with the hubby. And I was just picking up some last minute stuff and enjoying a latte and the soul filling journey through Target. I'm walking through the various parts of Target, sipping my drink, loving my life. And then I walk in front of the baby section, which happens to be adjacent to the maternity section. Now, I can't emphasize this enough. I had been to Target a couple of times, a couple of dozen times, if we're going to be honest, since September. You'd better believe it. Had I passed by those particular sections before? Absolutely. Had I struggled with my thoughts and emotions after walking past those sections? Not really since very early after the transfer had failed. But holy shit, if at that moment I was not overcome with emotion. Now I'll tell you, it started in my stomach. It felt like there was an empty pit just instantly created. If you've ever experienced a grief burst, you know that you feel it instantly in your body. That's why it's a burst or a grenade or a bomb, right? And then I felt this hot fire in my throat. You know, the one that you have right before you cry and not just cry, like uncontrollably weep. I started shaking. Now my cart that I'd been tootling around Target with had several items. I mean, it wasn't full, but it had some stuff. And I just walked away. I'm pretty sure I left the latte too there. I was not fine. I walked out to my vehicle and I cried there for 15 to 20 minutes. Composed myself enough to drive home safely. Then I went and lay down in bed and cried some more. As I allowed the grief to pass through me, the grief burst itself passed. I was still a little tearful, but at that point I could function. And then the rest of the day, I kind of felt like I had a little bit of a hangover, which is incredibly common. That was a grief burst. And by all accounts, everything was fine until it wasn't. I'm very confident that most, if not all of you listening, have experienced this. Again, maybe not within the context of infertility. Maybe the loss of a loved one or a pet, maybe a breakup or a divorce. Grief bursts can happen anytime you're navigating grief. So I want to offer you three practical strategies for dealing with it with this smack across the face, this unpleasant surprise, these, these bursts, in the hopes that you can navigate them with some grace and compassion towards yourself. Okay, so first one, place your hand over your heart. 
I know it might seem campy or silly or ridiculous or whatever, and you might feel that way at first, but this is actually one of the best ways to reconnect with yourself by placing your hand over your heart and taking three to five deep cleansing breaths. And if you're crying, it's okay. You can still breathe when you're crying. You can still do this when you're crying. This doesn't have to be like a yoga perfect deep breath in and out, but you want to connect with your body. That is where your grief is stored. This isn't a brain thing, y'all. This is a carnal, visceral, guttural experience within your body. You cannot outlogic it and you cannot outthink it. It is not cognitive and it is not logical. It is grief. So place your hand on your heart and take three to five deep breaths. That is one of the fastest ways to ground yourself and to help you get back into your body. Now, if you can't put your hand on your heart because your hands are full or for whatever reason, it's not really practical, even just imagine your hand is on your heart and taking those deep breaths can get you back into your body and present and grounded. And second, drop the resistance to what's happening. I know it's counterintuitive. I know it doesn't feel natural. I know it will take practice. But in this moment, you can say yes to what is happening to you. If you can drop the resistance, you will help yourself through this process so much faster. Now, what do I mean by resistance? That is when you tell yourself you shouldn't be feeling whatever it is you're feeling. You argue with what you're feeling. You judge yourself for what you're feeling. You try to distract yourself or tell yourself, nope, I can't do this right now. That is resistance. Now, remember when I said that it's carnal, visceral, guttural? Yeah. I want you to think about that if you've ever broken a bone or had another painful injury. The pain was kind of inevitable, right? When we have an injury or something, we don't stand there arguing with it or arguing with our subsequent pain or like say, this is a really inconvenient time for my arm to be at a right angle. No, we focus on the very pressing issue at hand or at foot. I couldn't resist that joke. Sorry. The broken or injured part of our body. And it's an offshoot. I know this is a little bit of a digression, but isn't it such a great parallel to draw that we will address physical pain nearly immediately with medications, going to the doctor, ER, whatever. But with psychological pain, which when left unattended can manifest into physical pain, we're like, nah, I can wait. Ugh. It's such a telling narrative on our culture. Anyway, we have this injury and we're not arguing with it. We are in some ways expecting there to be pain. We do our best to breathe through it, riding the waves until the pain resides through an intervention or not. So just like pain is part of an injury, grief bursts are part of grief. So stop resisting them. And I know we don't mean to do it. This is very human because we don't like to feel pain. We don't like to feel grief. But resisting it or stopping resistance, dropping the resistance, is just counter to what we're used to. We're not used to saying yes to something that feels painful. Everything in our primitive brain doesn't want that. So of course, it is not going to be something that comes naturally to us. We're going to have to work at it. And if saying yes to what's happening feels like too much of a stretch, then say to yourself, you don't have to say it out loud, right? You can just talk to yourself. I allow this, or I can allow this, or this is happening and I can allow this. I can allow this wave to pass through me, whatever feels true to you. Because remember, feelings cannot hurt us. I know we think they can. I know it feels like they can overcome us. They actually cannot hurt us. We don't need to escape them. They are, in their truest sense, vibrations in our bodies. Feelings are an invaluable part of our humanness. We're supposed to have feelings. Even the ones we don't always want, or certainly the ones we aren't always prepared for. And when we allow them, they get less intense and they're easier to experience. So first, hand over your heart, long, deep breaths. Get grounded, get back into your body. Second, drop your resistance to what's happening. Even though it feels really weird, 
Say yes to what's happening. Allow it. Give it permission in your body. Drop the resistance. And third, which is my favorite part, love yourself through this process, through your grief experience. If we aren't loving ourselves through a grief burst, then typically what we do is take whatever the pain of that burst is and we pile more pain on top of it. We take that pain and instead of processing it cleanly, we turn it into suffering. We turn clean pain into dirty pain. Now, if you're not sure what I'm referring to, go back to episode nine called Clean Versus Dirty Pain. There is no need to be mad at yourself because this grief burst happened. Doesn't mean you did anything wrong. You do not need to make it mean that you are stuck or stalled or not healing or not further along or any of those things. Love yourself through this most undesirable grief burst because this is grief. This is just grief and you're doing great. And I want you to tell yourself that in that moment. Be kind to yourself. Use my voice if it helps. I have clients tell me all the time. They hear my voice in their head. They hear me saying things like, you're doing this beautifully. This is incredibly normal. Nothing has gone wrong. And I adore you. I say that to myself when things are really hard for me. I love you, Emily. I love you. You have got this. Say it to yourself. The grief burst comes... You put your hand on your heart, three big deep breaths, stop resisting what's happening, and finally love yourself as it happens. You are kind to yourself in the way that you speak to yourself. There's no need to turn this into something bigger than it is. Grief bursts are just a part of grief, just like pain is a part of an injury. Okay. That is what I have for you today, my beautiful friends. Have a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of IVF This. If you like what you've heard, click subscribe and follow to make sure you don't miss an episode. And if you want to learn more, head over to www.ivfthiscoaching.com to learn how to work together.